Hey guys, John here. Uh, today what we're gonna, this video is going to cover is loops. There are four loops in uh, programming, or at least in the C-sharp language. Um, and what those loops are is we have a for each loop, a for loop, a while loop, and a do while loop. And I'm going to demonstrate each of those and show the syntax and discuss each one. Um, basically, what is a loop though? So a loop is basically a repeated event for a number of times or until some condition is meant. Um, basically, the type of loop you use depends on your programming task and your personal preference. Um, one benefit of C-sharp over C++ um, is that we get what's called the for each loop, which is the same thing as a for loop, just a lot more readable in terms of being able to iterate through data. So the first one we're going to cover is uh, the for loop. And the for loop is one of the most common loops that you'll encounter. Uh, it's useful for tasks such as finding a name in a variable or, or, um, or calculating how many, or iterating through how many objects are in a list or something like that. But basically, say you take the example of finding a name in a, in a variable, so like an array variable, which is a list of items. Uh, if we have a variable that's storing multiple names and we want to find just one name and then do something with it, we would use a for loop. The for loop will allow you to iterate through all the names and find the name you're searching for. So the first loop I'm going to cover is the for loop, okay? And the syntax for a for loop, uh, and I'm sure you guys have seen it, the syntax for a for loop looks like this. It uses the keyword for, all right? And what you put in here is int i equals zero. Oops and i equals zero, and then semicolon, and then i less than some max value. So for now I'm just going to put max value, and then i plus plus. We're just going to increment i, and then here is our loop code. So our code goes here. Now, oftentimes understanding loops is more simple than it may seem. Uh, so it gets the name loop because it uses the keyword for. In pseudocode, this loop reads for the integer variable i equals zero. Checking to see if i is less than some max value. So if i is less than some max value, we're going to run some code and then we're going to increment i. All right, as long as i is less than the maximum value, it will continue to increment. When the condition of i less than the maximum value is no longer met, the program will stop looping and continue on with the rest of the code. So say this is our for loop right here. And then say right here, I had a debug.log that said, hey, this debug.log will not get called until the for loop is finished. So as long as i is less than some value, it's, this debug.log will not get called until, the, until this condition is no longer true. So for instance, what is this value? It's, any, it's a variable. So say we had 100 apples, okay? Say we had 100 apples, and I need to calculate, I need to print out each apple. Well, well i is less than some max value. Well, we could put apples. So i is 0. Is 0 less than 100? Yes. So we're going to run some code, and then we're going to increment. Now we're at 1. Is 1 less than 100? Yes. We get up to 98. Is 98 less than 100? Yes. Is 99 less than 100? Yes. Now we're at 100. Is 100 less than 100? No. So we break out of the loop, and now we run our debug.log. Hey. All right? Pretty simple. Um, so with this apple, say we have 100 apples, all right, somebody comes along and wants to buy all our apples. We say OK and start ringing up the apples. In this scenario, you need, to count, you need to print out each apple so you know you need some sort of loop. Now, the way this works with the for loop is I'm going to go ahead and say here, for int i equals 0, i less than apples, and I'm going to print out each apple. So I'm going to say debug.log, the current apple, which is i, because i is getting incremented, which is this plus plus here. That means add 1 to i. And what's going to happen here is if I run this, it's going to debug 0 through 99. Now, the reason why it does 0 through 99 and not 1 through 100 is because numbers start at 0. And I said i equals 0. If I wanted it to print out 100, I would have to say i equals 1. And i is less than equal to apples. And now it will print out 100. So it's going to print out 1 through 100. See that? And if I wanted to, I can even go in reverse. Um, I can go ahead and change the logic, switch it up. I could say for int i equals 100, while i is greater than uh, greater than 1. So while i equals 100, while, and then while i is greater than 1, 
um, go ahead and subtract i. So i minus, and let's go and see what happens there. Now it's going to print it out backwards. So you'll see here we got all the way down to 2 through 100. And the reason why I did 2 and not 1 is because I said greater than. So I need greater than equal to 1. And then it would have given me it. So now we have 100 through 1. All right, so that's a for loop. Not, it, it gets a little bit getting used to, and in this video, I'm just really covering the syntax of the loops. Um, I will have another series going over practical exercises using all the fundamentals that we've covered. Um, so look forward to that, but for now, that's the for loop. And what we have next is the... All right, so what we have next is the for each loop. Now, with the for each loop, it only works when you have an array. Okay, and I'm going to explain more about arrays in the next video, but an array basically is a variable that holds multiple variables of the same data type. So for instance, this is what an array looks like. You use these square brackets next to your data type, and then we're going to say numbers. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, declare the array. And I'm going to cover more of this in the next video, but it's just for demonstration purposes to show you the for each loop. So you have numbers equals 5, 6, 7, 8. So what if I wanted to print out each of those numbers? Well, I could also do, I could use it doing I could do it using a for loop, which would look like this. So I would say for int i equals zero, i less than numbers, and then dot length. It's going to get how many elements are in the array. So there's four elements in the array, so this loop is going to run four times. And then i plus plus increment i. And then I would say here debug dot log the current uh, element in the array. So I would say numbers and then i, and that's going to grab the current index. So it's going to print out 5, 6, 7, 8. Now that's fine. Um, if I were to use a for each loop, which is the exact same thing as a for loop, it's just more readable. I could say here for each var, use the key universal data type, and you don't even have to read it saying for each var, you just say for each. So you say for each number and the keyword in numbers then you can debug.log the current number, just like that. No need to work with i or anything like that, no incrementing. This here is the current number, and this is the array you're going through. So for each number in the numbers array, you're going to debug.log the current number. Now this var corresponds with the data type of this array. So if I wanted to, instead of saying var, I could also say int, because that's the type of array it is. But for most readability purposes, I usually say var and read it as for each number in numbers array, debug.log the current number. And if we test that out, let's see here, 5, 6, 7, 8, using a for each loop. All right. Um, <clears throat> the next example that we have here uh, is the while loop. Now, the while loop, and by the way, just just while we're on loop still, um, just know any loop you're in, no code below it will get ran as long as the loop is running. So the loop has to end before something else can run. Now we have the while loop. And the while loop is considered a dangerous loop because you can get caught in what's called an infinite loop. If you get caught in an infinite loop, your memory will fill up and Unity will crash. And if you're on a shitty computer, your computer will crash. Oftentimes this has happened when I'm working with a coroutine and I want to do something continuously and I forget the yield statement. If you forget to yield in a coroutine while using a while loop, your game will crash. Unity will crash. Um, so when you're in a while loop, it needs an exit condition. Okay, so for instance, this is very dangerous here. While true, because true is never false. Therefore, this will run forever and it will crash your system. If I just did it like this, there's no delay, so it's running 60 frames per second, taking up all the memory, and then done. Now, what I can do, though, is I have here, say we have here, um, public int apples, right, equals 100, okay? I can say here, um, say we have here, public int apples is 100, okay? And what I'm going to do is we're going to subtract our apples, so I'm going to say, well, apples... I'm going to put a condition in it. So while apples is greater than 1, I'm going to go ahead and say debug.log. We're going to debug.log apples, the value of it. And then I'm also going to say apples minus minus. So I'm subtracting an apple every time. So while apples, which is 100, is greater than 1, which it is, it's going to print out apples, and then we're going to subtract one. So it's going to do this 100 times, and then it will get to here, which is going to say debug.log, the while loop finished. Yay for no crash. 
All right, let's go ahead and test that out. Yeah, all right, and there you go. So I printed out 100 through 2 again. Um, and the reason why that is greater than 1, if I did greater than equal to 1, then it would have done that. All right, so that's the while loop. Dangerous loop, you can get yourself in an infinite loop. Make sure you have a condition that allows it to get out of that loop. Okay? And the final loop we're going to cover here is called the do while loop. And the do while loop is pretty cool. It's very similar to what we just did with the while loop, but it says do. And the difference between them is that the do will happen at least one time. All right, and the syntax for it is this you do do, the open closing brackets, and then a condition. So doing will do the loop at least one time. So for instance, if I wanted to say print out apples, I'm going to say do debug.log. We're going to print out apples, apples, and then plus apples. So how many apples do we have? And then how long do you want to do that for? Do debug.log apples while, um, what is that going to be? Do while apples is greater than one. All right, and here we'll say greater than equal to one. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to again subtract apples so we can get out of the do while loop. All right, so we're going to say apples minus minus, and the syntax for this requires a while loop. So we're going to say while. And there you go. So you're doing this at least one time, and then while apples is greater than or equal to one. So for instance, if I said here while apples is greater than 90, it would just run once, and then apples is greater than 90, so it just it's going to stop. However, grapples, it's going to be greater than 1 for a while, so it's going to keep going. So if we go and test that out, let's go and run it, and there you go. You get 1 through 100 again. All right. So that's the video on the syntax of loops, and uh, if you're a little lost on it, you know, try and watch the video again. Um, they're really not that bad once you work with it. If you're not sure on practical examples, don't worry. Uh, I think as soon as I finish the arrays, I'm going to cover a practical course, which is going to take everything that we've done so far, and we're going to do a few exercises together. It's probably going to take about an hour, uh, and it's going to use for loops, for each loops, arrays, uh, if statements, switch statements, and we're going to get really comfortable. We're going to do real world applications, uh, and it's going to, you know, it's going to help you understand um, what we're doing here, and it's going to get you thinking logically. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys understand the loops, and I will see you next time. Thanks.